Well, I'm, I'm so honored to be in this group. Um, we're, we're talking about lifelong learning and um, I've, I've been just in the art world all my life, but I've never made art. I never called myself an artist uh, until really, really recently. I've been making art for about 20 years after my retirement. And I make art every day. So I guess that I'm entitled to call myself an artist if I make art every day. Um, and I have a background in urban planning and environmental um, practices. And um, in, in this project, and I work in a lot of mediums since I've become an active worker in art, I've experimented in painting and drawing and, and sculpture. And for this project that was selected, um, this is a three-dimensional sculpture called The House. And it reflects sheltering in place very concretely. So it's a box made out of paper. And um, as I get into more of my little presentation, I'll say that um, the boxes that I make personally that are invented three-dimensional shapes end up having more meaning than working with a found box. So I like being able to uh, actually get into the sculpture of the three-dimensional shape. And um, I will also mention that I have thousands of images in my uh, inventory of images. I'm sort of a hoarder of images. I collect images. I have all the photographs that my father took and I'm collecting images now from other members of the family. And even if I don't even know who the people are, if they're a strong image, uh, they become part of my possession of my inventory. So, so this uh, object, um, I tore up a book to make the sides of the sculpture. It was a book from about 1920 made with really good paper. And I, I really adore working with paper. Um, and I, when I find good paper becomes an object for me to work with. So this was a, a 1910, 1920s book of great paper that showed um, American houses, I, I think in the late 19th century, early 20th century. And it was sort of a, a showcase of, um, this is what an American estate would look like. And it was sort of like taken from the British idea of what a great estate would look like. And so, when we were sheltering in place, it seemed incumbent on me to make houses because that's where we were confined to. And um, there are some other images in this piece other than taken from that early uh, American architectural book. There are other images here that the roof actually is an old uh, publication from IBM from the 19, 70s where um, they're doing network connections and other people have looked at it and seen constellations. So I, I thought it, it, I worked experimentally a lot um, and the more experimentally I work actually the better the product is. So I think that's true for other people as well. And uh, in this house we're looking we're looking at the outside of the house, but we're looking inside the house. So there's a sort of indoor, outside, inside approach to it. And we see windows and chairs. And the, uh, the book presented a lot of dining rooms. And this really large room is sort of like a refractory inside a, a mansion of a house. And in, in the project that I'm presenting here, I work in black and white. I do like to work in color. And I thought it was interesting, the last presentation. So I've sort of been pulled into black and white during this experience of COVID. Um, and I'm experimenting a lot with that medium. So then we can move on to the next image. And I, this is kind of like almost too much to look at. It was really hard to present it. So I hope you can not get distortion in your eyesight from looking at it. 
but I tried to work three dimensionally and go beyond that here. So this is called the village. And I, I, when the house got accepted to the show, I said, well, I have to continue with this. And so I've made oh, probably around 10 houses since then. And um, here I photographed them trying to capture the, the sense of it as an installation. So if this project goes anywhere, I, I would like to build it up as an installation that you could almost walk through. And, um, and there are many different houses in here. And again, I'll come back to the theme that the better house is one that gets constructed as a paper sculpture, as opposed to working with a box. But um, I do work with a, a found box. Those Amazon boxes have been put to use here in some beneficial way. And I wanted to uh, present this, this box, which you see in the image. And um, I, I was really surprised that this roof of the house ended up being the roof of my childhood home, which is a uh, Cape Cod cottage bungalow. And the proportions came out exactly like my childhood home, which was really emotional for me because I have a lot of um, just kind of memories about that house that it's really important to me. And, and working from memory is fundamental to my work. So if I, if I don't have a house, uh, a memory with it or an emotional attachment to it, is, it, it's not as meaningful and I don't give it as much of myself. So um, revisiting that house of my childhood, totally experimentally, I mean, there was no um, intention to do that. So that's sort of like an intuitive space that, that art allows me to get into. And then the image here of, uh, I've shared this image a little bit, but this image became important too. And this is an image now where I'm viewing outside of the house, I'm looking around. And most of the photographs in there are um, personal images. I work in um, photography and collage. And um, this was, it, it found its place in, in my village. And um, what else can I say about this particular piece? Again, I use intuition a lot in putting the pieces together of found materials. And um, I think I can go on to the next piece. So I, I, this is really different than the village. I do a lot of uh, working with images from old books and found, found um, paper. And the scissor is my friend. I use the scissor every day. Anybody who works in collage knows how important this scissor is. <laughs> so, um, and I, I can't, I mean, this is not like the world's greatest piece, but I put it in the show because it kind of caught the black and white mood I'm in. Um, the, the, the woman there is in a portrait by a famous French artist, David. And then I, it was interesting to me that as my scissor went into this image, it cut it just like a Vermeer. And it was like, oh, Vermeer is talking to David. And then the bright colored hand holding that basket of food is from a, a book that um, is um, an ethnography book. It's an actual photograph of a woman in the Philippines in the 1920s. And then the table set there is from, and so this is where I come full circle. It, it's from a book um, showing early 20th century, uh, reminiscing of the 19th century of how to, of setting a table with um, Americana um, table and dishware and pewter. And so, I, I return in a way to the theme of the, the um, looking at furniture in the domestic setting. And um, 
and it all just works together. And, and in fact, this piece isn't even glued together. So I glue a lot as all collage artists do. But now with the iPhone, um, you can capture an image and it becomes permanent and then you can just reassemble the pieces and then it's another image. So at this point, this image doesn't have any um, glue and, and the pieces could be reassembled in a different way. Um, I really appreciate being included in this show because um, I, my website is called Mid-Career Artist and I'm not even mid-career in it, I'm coming into it. And it, it gives my life uh, purpose. I think one of the things that this sheltering in place is that you can, you, I can spend undevoted uh, time to this craft without any uh, reason to be any place else other than working on your craft. And, um, and you can, or I can keep my hands busy it's in this time of uh, not interacting in person with other people face to face. It's really important for me to keep my hands physically occupied in the creation of work. And that's sort of a, a substitute for, um, the physical contact that we have that we're missing right now. Uh, I think that probably is what I wanted to say. Um, and, and my next, in future work, um, I've always wanted to work more in selecting images out of my work and then finding them to be sort of important symbols and that they could go into like a codex of some sort. So I'd like to be a little less aggressive at just collecting images and try to focus into a vocabulary of maybe 40 images that I can work with that become uh, a vocabulary for an ongoing project. And I'm impressed with artists that have done that. And I, I wanna figure out ways to do that myself. And I, again, thank you at New Move for everything you've done. I think I, I myself have been involved with museums in the Bay Area and in other parts of the country. And um, I think what New Move's doing is excellent for allowing artists to be participants. Thank you.